Wonderful. So good morning, everybody. Welcome to evening. Sorry, I was about to say evening prayers, morning prayer. <laughs> Not yet, Richard. <laughs> um, welcome to everybody in the Far East. Welcome to evening prayer. Um, <laughs> I don't know. They, I've, so I've recorded a lot of evening prayers. You're probably aware you get those six days a week at five o'clock in the afternoon. But we are doing a live morning prayer now and remembering St. Alban. Um, the uh, first known martyr of Britain who died about 250. Um, good morning, Elaine, anyway. It's great to have you with again this morning. Good morning, Richard. It's lovely to be with you. Do you have any facts about St Alban that you can share with us? Oh, um, I mean, basically, he, he was um, from a, a, a decent family um, and he chose to shelter a, um, a a priest who was uh, presumably fleeing the authorities uh, and, uh, and the priest convinced him about the Christian faith. Um, so um, when the authorities came after the priest, ultimately Alban agreed to die in his place, which was, I mean, it's, it's the story. I don't know how much of it would have been absolutely true. You don't know with the what are called the hagiographies, these holy writings of people um, from that age. But certainly it's a sign that, that there were Christians there in the mid third century and that, um, well, they could be killed for their faith. And so the first one we remember is St. Alban. Of course, he's got his relics are thought to be um, enshrined in, in St. Alban's Abbey Cathedral. Uh, I don't know if anybody listening has been there, but uh, um, we remember, I think, just him as as that early symbol of, of Christian presence in this country. And we give grateful thanks to God for the faith that we've had in this country for the last, well, 1750 years. Absolutely. And more. It's wonderful. Um, so thank you to Elaine for doing the technology to make this possible with my um, creaking computer equipment. Um, and hopefully my iPad will not freeze up at any point. So let's go to morning prayer. We've got uh, a very important reading from Romans uh, and we've also got uh, um, Psalm 73 when we get there. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion. Who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you, his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all your works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. As we come together this morning to pray with one heart and mind as we rejoice in the gift of this new day. May that so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Psalm 73. Truly God is loving to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. Nevertheless, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. 
For I was envious of the proud. I saw the wicked in such prosperity. For they suffered no pains, and their bodies are sleek and sound. They come to no misfortune like other folk, nor are they plagued as others are. Therefore pride is their necklace, and violence wraps them like a cloak. Their iniquity comes within, the conceits of their hearts overflow. They scoff and speak only of evil, they talk of oppression from on high. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue ranges round the earth. And so the people turn to them, and find in them no fault. They say, how should God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked. Ever at ease, they increase their wealth. Is it in vain that I cleansed my heart and washed my hands in innocence? All day long I have been stricken and chastened every morning. If I had said, I will speak as they do, I should have betrayed the generation of your children. Then thought I to understand this, but it was too hard for me. Until I entered the sanctuary of God and understood the end of the wicked. How you set them in slippery places, you cast them down to destruction. How suddenly do they come to destruction, perish and come to a fearful end. As with a dream when one awakes, so, Lord, when you arise, you will despise their image. When my heart became embittered and I was pierced to the quick. I was but foolish and ignorant. I was like a brute beast in your presence. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing upon earth that I desire in comparison with you. Though my flesh and my heart fail me, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Truly those who forsake you will perish. You will put to silence the faithless who betray you. But it is good for me to draw near to God. In the Lord God have I made my refuge, that I may tell of all your works. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And our reading, we continue with Romans. It's Romans chapter 12, beginning at the first verse. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in portion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Open my eyes, O I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments. 
that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We come before the Lord in prayer this morning. Perhaps the first question we might want to ask is, Lord, what do you want us to pray about? We confess, Lord, it is very easy to think about those things that are at the front of our minds, those concerns that most trouble us as individuals, and we know that you're interested in those and want to hear about them. And we know, Lord, that you call us to pray about others and not just ourselves. But grant us grace to discern the things that you would most like us to be praying about so that your good purposes can be achieved. And Lord Jesus Christ, this morning, we bring before you the great concerns that we have about the way in which There are so many people who have health concerns. We're concerned that they have health concerns. We're concerned that there seem to be so many things that we can do medically these days that it actually creates more demand because there's more that we can do. Uh, we've discovered so many drugs that there's so much more that may, can be administered to people and it costs so much. The management of the health service and the funding of the health service is a perennial topic for conversation. It's a massive political issue. We employ so many people in the NHS and yet we feel that more, more could always be done. So, Lord Jesus Christ, we appeal to you to guide our footsteps. We especially bring before you those people who are over-concerned with their health and use up valuable time that will be best spent with other people. And those who are so inclined to hold themselves back that their health issues will not be properly dealt with because they do not bring them to the attention of the medical services. We live before the Lord those people who are lonely and isolated and need help to get help. And we pray that assistance will come 
so that they can be properly looked after. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We bring before the Lord his concern for those who are suffering as the result of famine or disaster. At the moment, there are special concerns for Yemen and for the Democratic Republic of Congo. And Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that aid will get to the places of need and that people of violence will not stand in the way of effective help going to those places that most need it. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We bring before the Lord those people who today are suffering from discrimination and abuse. And we recognize that while we like to think of ourselves as all accepting and including, that that's not a common human pattern. And we ask you, Lord, to help us to deal with those situations where we are rejected or excluded. And especially those times when it happens because of some way in which we've been classified as a result of our ethnicity, our skin color, our gender, our age, whatever it is. And of course, it could be our faith. Lord Jesus Christ. You are one who was both rejected as a person, part of a despised group of people, one who was at one time a refugee, one who was condemned essentially for telling the truth. So you know the way people feel. Pray that we can cast our cares on you in the midst of difficulty and discrimination and know the consolation of your unfailing love, but also your deliverance and an improvement in our situation. Lord, in your mercy. Oh, hear our prayer. We bring before the Lord today the ministry at St. Clement and St. David Worcester. We pray for their new initiatives, the Men's Shed and Walking Church, and for the work of the new Outreach and Mission Group. We give thanks for the work of the ALMs and the clergy, Sarah Cottrell and Phil Bradford. We thank the Lord for the innovative way in which that church is seeking to approach mission. We pray that the Lord will bless and guide all that they do, that it may please him and be fruitful. We bring before the Lord the Diocese of Christ the King in South Africa and Bishop William. We pray that the Lord will especially help South Africa get on top of the challenge of COVID. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. So we lift, we lift the Lord um, up as our Lord and Saviour and as Lord over our days. Lord Jesus Christ, we look for your rule and reign over our circumstances, your guidance for our footsteps, be a light to our path, enlighten our thinking, put your word upon our tongue and shine through us, we pray. Eternal Father, when the gospel of Christ first came to our land, you gloriously confirmed the faith of Alban by making him the first to win a martyr's crown. 
grant that following his example in the fellowship of the saints, we may worship you, the living God, and give true witness to Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So thank you, Elaine, um, uh, without whom this wouldn't have been a live broadcast. Uh, and uh, I think it's Francis tomorrow. And then Elaine and I will be back on Thursday. And uh, we'll try. you'll have a really positive and pleasant day. Absolutely. And it's always a joy to, to be with you. It's something that I'd love to do. And having had a, a lovely day out and about spending time with people yesterday, um, today, I've, well, for the next few days, I'm in the office doing uh, admin tasks so not so much fun but absolutely necessary that's right uh, yeah that's uh, very much part of the modern age isn't it uh, elaine absolutely so there we are have a good day everybody bye for now bye